The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we come to you at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we got the market off 40 points on the S&P cash. Is that right? Let me update that just to make sure. Off 35 points on the S&P cash. And uh, Dow 180, NASDAQ went down 125, Russell off 43. Uh, tried to hold the market uh, right after the open, but uh, my guess is that we had a lot of people in China starting to sell what they could instead of what they couldn't. They were having a, a bad day at BlackRock uh, for the Hang Seng. Uh, and I think we're got, kind of getting af affected by that. Not only are they selling some equities, uh, but uh, the even though they sold off most of the bonds, uh, some Chinese still have U.S. bonds, and those uh, tend to be seem uh, to be uh, uh, be selling them. Uh, so it's uh, like I said, uh, a lot of times in down markets, it's not sell what you uh, want to or what you should. The worst performers. Uh, but most people will sell uh, the best because you're going to find a buyer for it. If they actually tried to sell the worst performers, all it would do is go to zero and have no buyers whatsoever. So there is a method to the madness, but instead of us being kind of small fry and selling what uh, probably isn't working well for us, the big guys – have to sell where they can, and that's generally the big stocks, and you start to see a little bit of that. During the show yesterday, uh, we had um, kind of a, a, an attack on uh, Apple um, when everybody started uh, figuring out uh, who wrote the article and that it lacked a broad amount of context um, and that the, the Writers of the article couldn't answer those contact uh, context questions like, were they reducing the amount of low-end phones so that they could concentrate on the parts they did have for high-margin phones? Well, nothing but crickets. No one knows anything. Uh, I don't know what the answer is, but the article really uh, had one person saying – uh, kind of what they were seeing from one supply company, one company that actually supplied Apple. So we're basically flat on the day. It's down maybe a quarter of a percent, which is nothing, uh, which is about like 45 percent. So, again, um, we were talking yesterday about uh, the part in Jesse Livermore's book where you can really tell whether or not uh, there are buyers in the market when you get these kind of things. It looks to me like uh, there are buyers on pullbacks, not that many people uh, wanting to buy the breakout, but certainly a lot of people wanting to buy the pullback. Uh, Chinese devaluation coming. I don't know. Um, it's almost all self-inflicted, uh, and that may be the problem for our earnings tonight with uh, Tesla. Uh, in that uh, I, I think the Chinese government is deathly afraid uh, that if they let everybody run around and do uh, what they want, they try to overthrow the government uh, of Z or Xi or however you want to pronounce it. So they continue to put on the draconian um, zero um, COVID uh, regulations that pretty much have been proved the rest of the, around the rest of the world uh, as not working very well. Uh, you want to kind of limit exposure, but you, if you just close it all down, all you're doing is uh, going to say that uh, you're going to close down forever because eventually uh, somebody's got to get it and they've got to get immunity to it. Some of the shots work well, but as we learned out, uh, getting a shot doesn't mean you don't get it. So, or spread it. So what do we do? Well, the question is just how long will China uh, be on this path? Is it 
something they really think they need to do because they've got huge amounts of internal problems or is this just a political move uh, to make sure that they have total co- uh, control of the country? Um, not a very open or transparent country. So that's uh, it. I'll be very interested to see what Tesla has to say since uh, just about everything that they're doing now uh, is dependent on having big sales in China, which reminds me of a great movie, Big Trouble in Little China. I wonder how many people remember that. I loved it. Another good Kurt Russell movie. Um, but uh, eh, your basic superhero, anti-hero uh, Claude kind of guy. Eh, pretty standard fare, but I liked it. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, let's do a little history, and then when we get back into the second segment, we'll start getting into a lot more charts. But uh, I don't think that there's a lot you can talk about uh, other than uh, the, the TLT and the dollar, uh, gold uh, sucking it. And uh, I wanted to get to the dollar here before we did a little bit of history. Uh, 112.830. So kind of ha- hanging around the previous lows of what is this? Uh, yeah, this morning at 6, 630. Um Hey, we're up a little bit off that, but uh, let's go back to the – that's on the euro and the dollar. On the dollar itself, 112.830. So, yeah, uh, people buying dollars and hiding in it, kind of the, the trade for a while. We saw some sell-offs. Kind of tough to tell. Anyway, uh, let's do a little history, and then we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And, uh, oh, it is history, so let's go to that. And that is, oh, get back to it. On this day in 1979, according to Dan Bricklin, the first real release of VisiCalc was completed in the package for shipment. VisiCalc was the first commercially available spreadsheet software and quickly became the first killer app of the personal computer market. Uh, I met him, I think, in the November uh, users group meeting we had in town. And... Uh, very interesting to meet somebody. At that time, everybody's excited. It was the dawn of uh, computers. Uh, he was uh, around uh, the world uh, spreading the good news. Um, of course, most of us, uh, it was what, 18, 19 at the time, um, didn't have any idea what a spreadsheet was. And, of course, it was something that was really left to the uh, accounting uh, kind of folks and yeah, I don't think anybody, if you would have said spreadsheet 1979, if one out of 50 people knew what it was, I'd be surprised. The uh, big thing about this is just how uh, the idea of the killer app, that is one product, uh, one piece of software that goes with your hardware, i.e. a computer, that makes it uh, incredibly useful. And of course... Uh, what you had was a bunch of MBAs coming out of uh, colleges, and they all needed it and drove and bought an Apple, which uh, helped save the company, and bought VisaCalc, which made them a lot of money. We'll be back in a minute. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. 
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. And uh, yeah, always a lot of rumors around these things. Uh, now, when we get to options, uh, why we're still probably focusing more on uh, what options say now, and that's still 375 for uh, for uh, expiration on Friday. At least that's what the option market makers are planning on. Uh, we're really just not that weak uh, in the market. Um, like I said, uh, I think a lot will have to do with Tesla. Yeah, I don't like the way it's hanging around at the lows, but uh, the history on earnings for Tesla has been everybody shorting it to the moon, uh, only to see that uh, if it doesn't blow out to the downside, uh, it, it tends to eat a lot of short sellers on the upside. Um, and they've been there. Uh, more than 20% on a daily basis has been shorted uh, for the last, uh, I'm going to say, three weeks. It got into 30% uh, back on the 6th of October. Uh, but uh, pretty much every day above 20%. So one out of five, one out of four, depending on the day, shares are shorted. Doesn't mean that everybody went home short those but it did mean during the day that it was at least uh probably one out of four shares were being shorted uh anything more than about five or eight is pretty high uh it does not mean that uh they carried that home and that's the other side of this coin and that is that tesla's going into this at least uh for the uh 30th uh, which is the last reporting day from the exchanges with just a day to cover and only a 2.4%. Um, now, that's in the rearview mirror. Again, that was 19 days ago. Uh, we really don't have uh, any idea. I've always wondered whether or not uh, companies uh, that were, uh, let me put it, hedge funds that were short these companies knew that they didn't want to see some big print uh, for both days to cover a percent. So all you have to do is get out on the 29th uh, of your short position and guess what? It doesn't show up and you go back short right again uh, the next Monday and you can keep out of getting those prints. Uh, a lot harder to do it uh, 
reading the dailies. I've always worked at that as a theory, but I haven't found a good way to prove it. Uh, but, uh, eh, I do digress. Anyway, uh, that's it. I wanted to go back into some of the stocks that were actually uh, moving the market uh, and probably not moving the market, but Old Faithful has been uh, Generac. And, man, are they going to get the uh, uh, the uh, losing horn today. Uh, that sounded a little bit too much. Uh, anyway, the uh, big move on Generac. I didn't look at the news. Uh, t -t 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 it was an earnings miss. I do remember that. Let's see if there's anything else out here. Uh, this has been the go-to stock for a while. I have a feeling um, I'll look at it tonight, but uh, a great deal of houses are being built with these systems uh, to begin with. And the housing move may be one of the things that really has uh, challenged Generac uh, now since so many of these were add-ons uh, to being built especially in California where you might have spotty power uh, in other places. But, uh, wow, 25%, uh, uh, that is quite the haircut. And it got the loser horn of the day from the price is wrong, otherwise known as the price is right. Uh, other losers of the day are Winnebago. Um, you could kind of bet on this one with the uh, high prices of diesel. Uh, remember why some of these things are gas-powered? Uh, most of those are the older ones. The newer ones, too, tend to come, uh, I'm told, about 75 or 80 percent of them with diesel engines in them. And uh, that's still, I think, uh, I didn't look at the diesel price, but I think it's still around five bucks. Around here are 550. I know that I've seen prints of six and 650 uh, in other states. Not surely what it is in California now, uh, but pretty huge. This hasn't blown out the lows, but it's hard to believe that uh, over time high fuel prices uh, won't hit anything that flies, floats, or uh, drives like a uh, giant uh, uh, semi truck. So you're down, you got some enough volume. It's not as bad as one would think, but uh, certainly the price pressure is there in Winnebago. Uh, also uh, in the uh, uh, nutty like a fruit fly division of wacko earnings uh, is Intuitive Surgical. Um, seems to always be the one that has a huge move one way or the other. I can't remember too many times it went sideways. This one is seems to be one that does tend to pop very good. Uh, the uh, Tesla battery packs, um, I'll forget them. They're not selling well. There are, they're selling a handful of them, uh, but that's uh, in the worst part. It may be the most expensive add-on you can have to your house. Um, much, much cheaper to buy the... Uh, add-on from Generac than it is from a Tesla battery pack, um, especially if you run it off propane. So not a big fan of those Tesla battery packs, unless you live on somewhere like Hawaii, where it's incredibly expensive to get fuel, or maybe somewhere out in the middle of the desert where you actually have solar cells uh, that can work 365. Um, most people don't know that... Uh, Solar cells get 90% of the power in six and a half hours of the day. So out of 24, you got six and a half hours to really catch 90% of all the power. And guess what if the cloud comes by or a lot of other stuff? So you've got to have pretty sunny climates. Uh, down here in Florida, I'm not a big fan of them either, mostly because we get uh, multiple weeks of uh, cloudy weather. You wouldn't believe it down here in Florida, but we do. So, again, um, it'd be tough if that happened and you were depending on those solar cells. Uh, a lot easier to know that the propane is uh, tanked up for your Generac. But, uh, again, maybe one day that changes. But 
it's very tough. You got to have solar cells that track the sun to get uh, the maximum output. You got to keep them clean. Uh, a lot of maintenance on that, and I think a lot of people forget. Um, and just putting them on the, the uh, uh, roof of your house uh, ends up meaning that you're going to probably cut that six and a half hours a day, uh, depending on which way your house is uh, uh, aimed. Uh, to maybe three and a half or four hours. So, again, very tough to, to do. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of solar cells being done on a mass scale by a big company uh, that can hire people to sit there and maintain them and wash them, and repair them, and make sure that the uh, sun trackers uh, follow them all day. When those mo motors are busted, they can fix them right then. Uh, much harder when everybody has to go and repair them on an individual houses. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And yeah, Generac, uh, G-N-R-C is the symbol for you home gamers out there, 877-927-6648. Uh, okay, so let's go on to some other ones. Uh, Netflix, um, very interesting, uh, the commentary. Uh, it sounded uh, a great deal of uh, like, uh, God, thank God we're going to be able to get out of this. <laughs> uh, from CNBC and the other uh, pundits and shills on this, um, I didn't have any problem thinking that they could get two more, more million people for the fall. The question is, can they hold on to those uh, by next spring when everybody starts going outside? 
But uh, for what they have, yeah, is it is it nice that they're not reporting less uh, subscribers? But uh, two million instead of one million, um, again, a lot of times all you really want to see uh, is uh, that they don't fail uh, in bear markets to see a, a lot of shorts getting horribly squeezed. Um, 279.30 for a high today. It's eh, just a little over 270 now. Uh, you've got some fairly decent volume. Uh, this is where I would be a seller if you bought it, and that is any time. Let's see if I can go back and do this here, make sure I've got it right here. Two, two. Anytime. Well, you may have a little bit more. Any Anytime I buy after a huge gap down, it may fill all of the gap. But more than likely, what you're going to get is a reversal about halfway through the gap, and that would be about uh, 300 bucks. So could you continue to see a miserable cycle of people uh, shorting and then uh, being uh, squeezed back out? You can. And probably with the uh, uh, incredible uh, cheering section, you could get enough people to get it to 300. Uh, but this is where I'm starting to look, uh, especially in a bear market, if you go back and fill half the gap, uh, you should be feeling fairly happy and uh, taking your money and run. Uh, two. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have a white paper on solar for a typical residential home? 2500 3500 I don't have one myself. Uh, I have a neighbor considering it. I think the high cost over the long run, how would not be f uh, familiar with a solar scam. Any thoughts? Appreciate it. Yeah, the only way this works is if you make your neighbors pay for it, i.e. the government. And, of course, they think that uh, if we just keep salting the gold mine long enough, someone is going to come along and buy it, and then everybody's just going to believe it. Um, there are some physics that come into solar panels that just can't be bypassed. And that is at their best. I mean, these are the ones that uh, go to Mars and stuff like that. Um, solar uh, cell efficiency is about 31%. You're not going to get any more than that. So what they do is actually put multiple solar uh, uh, cells together uh, that collect more of the uh, spectrum of of uh, of light, but again, that's why the solar panels on those things rolling around on Mars cost uh, about 400 times more than a regular solar cell that goes on somebody's house here in uh, in the world, in the uh, planet Earth. So, do they work? Yes, in certain conditions, like I said, where you've always got sun. Hawaii, Arizona, where you don't have long term uh, where you're socked in with weather. And that means more than about three days. Pretty rare in the desert. Uh, pretty rare. You get uh, I grew up there. You get uh, clouds and about 10 minutes of rain every day at noon. And then you're done. Now, occasionally you'll get some kind of big windstorm, but that's about it. But, um, yeah, the no matter what they're saying. You've got two options, and the only one is getting your neighbors to pay through taxes that makes it worth it. Some areas, that would be it. Um, you know, when I first moved down here in 97, the most interesting thing I thought was how many of these roofs still had those solar water heaters on them uh, from the 80s. And, of course, they had, when... Uh, when it came time for new roofs around 2000, and everybody was putting them on around here, uh, nobody was putting them back on. My guess is that we're going to have the same thing. You're going to get to whatever the time is that uh, the new houses that have been built in the last 10 years that have them on it uh, get replaced. My guess is they're probably not going to be throwing those on. Um, you'd be much better off. that uh, you'd be much better off if we could actually have a inexpensive way of storing it. And we talked about 
the whole battery pack, it's horribly inefficient. And probably the best article on this uh, was in The Economist, I want to say two, three years ago, where they actually showed that what you're really doing is buying a big power generation station, that its cost does not go down because it's sitting idle, that you have to have when the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow. Uh, and that would be it. Um, down in Florida, we're working on, or not we, the Royal We, people are working on tides. And you know what? If you put them in different areas of Florida, you could probably get pretty close to 24 hours of power uh, on tides. To me, that sounds a lot smarter until you get to the point where anytime you touch water, uh, things go miserably awry. Uh, hurricanes, all kinds of other stuff. Theoretically, they were going to put these on the uh, bed of the ocean and out maybe a mile. So we don't, uh, you, they're not so um, problematic. That may be a much better option uh, than putting solar panels on roofs in Florida is to have something where we're, you know, maybe putting uh, these uh, tidal turbines uh, down in the Gulf Stream. Uh, that runs all the time. Now, sometimes it kind of moves around a bit, but I think you could probably find a center portion out there where it works. Uh, but some just work on uh, waves, uh, and generally you got some waves, not always uh, the huge ones. But uh, eh, I think that eventually, at least in some areas, on the coastal areas, may be a much better option over time. It's just going to take a little while to get it. Um, two, two. Anyway, hopefully that helps you out, Hector. Um, but there's reasons why everybody isn't buying solar roofs. And that is that uh, really, uh, you're just really getting them subsidized by the government. They don't make any sense. And you still have to buy, a, uh, pay for a giant uh, coal or um, natural gas power supply uh, in a central location that everybody uses because you're going to have 10 days in a row without sun. What do you do? There aren't enough. You couldn't, you know, you, if you spent twice the price of your home, you couldn't buy enough batteries. 877-927-6648. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we uh, get back to what's going on, I had a question about well, how options tell us stuff. And that is not always, but most of the time, uh, you'll get enough people on the each side of the market. And this goes back to a thing called the wisdom of crowds. About 1902, I think, uh, a man named, I want to say, is William Galton. Certainly, it's Galton. And he was uh, on a nice fall day. Uh, was uh, going to a uh, farm show, and they were giving away a bowl, uh, if you could guess its weight. So everybody put their guess in, and somebody won it, whoever was closest. Uh, but he was pretty interested in, you know, how close everybody was. Uh, so uh, he flipped the guy a buck or two uh, to get all the other uh, losing uh, guesses in in it and took it home and found out that the average of all the guesses, although some were way off to the upside, way down to the uh, downside, uh, when he actually put them all together, uh, the guesses from everybody was better than any one guess that was out there. Uh, that is in statistic classes yet today. Uh, is taught by putting a bunch of marbles in a one-gallon glass jar and asking people uh, how to uh, what the number is. And you'll be within 5% if you get about 25 people to guess. Um, you'll be plus or minus 5%, 95% of the time. So you're going to have a confidence level about that with just 25 people. So there is a wisdom of the crowds. It doesn't always work. Uh, notoriously, options are way off uh, for uh, quad witching. And that's because uh, you, you can't just look at that in a vacuum where you truly can. Uh, but you always have somewhere between four and six times the options you have on the monthly options expiration uh, opposed to the weekly. But there's still some. Um, but generally, they're like IBM, not IBM, Apple, Microsoft, some of the bigger um, stocks. Apple's probably the one that comes closest on an uh, ongoing basis. Uh, and you can actually see it, uh, especially for Apple. It's kind of interesting because uh, Buffett, who has a lot of shares of Apple, makes probably more money uh, rigging the option market. Uh, with his company uh, for Apple and selling options against it than probably he makes or made ever uh, buying the stock. Uh, back in the early 2000s, his partner called it sewage. Uh, he called it uh, weapons of mass destruction. And after a while, he figured out just how much money there actually is made in options. And he may have, I think he does still have, he did for a while, maybe two years ago, I remember, had the biggest options house of anybody in the United States. So from 
it's total trash to I'm the biggest option writer in the country. It's not very much different than he told everybody never to buy an airline. He bought a couple of them. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Buffett. As I always say, listening to some of the big men of Wall Street is like hiring your your uh, soon-to-be ex-wife's boyfriend lawyer to handle your divorce. Probably not a real smart idea. I remember on Buffett, uh, I think it was in 2000, he was uh, massively pumping Coca-Cola at the time. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I didn't buy it. Um, about two or three weeks later, he'd sold a bunch of them and they came out with a big announcement that they were having problems. And I kind of knew that uh, a lot of these guys have a lot of money, uh, but it's not enough. It's never enough. And they're more than willing uh, to do one thing or say one thing and do another. But uh, probably the, the options thing is probably the most egregious along with the airline thing of uh, doing that. 877-927-6648. Get uh, this down here. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, if you're in some places like California where they massively um, uh, support it with other people's money, i.e. taxes, uh, it does tend to work. But uh, you've got to be in those. You've got to be in those places. And again, is it making any money? No, you're just taking money from somebody else. Maybe that money would be better used on uh, people that are poor, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, hey, I couldn't vir virtue signal then. Uh, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Okay. Uh, other stocks of interest. We got to uh, Tesla. Uh, let's check in on uh, earnings right now. Uh, I mean, on uh, volume. Uh, 7.6 billion shares. So, again, we're not going to have a monster day. Uh, let's see right here. We got, uh, okay. So, we got Tesla. We got IBM. Uh, I did have uh, IBM. I uh, got out of it. I was hoping that it would be somewhere in the neighborhood. Um, uh, I think we bought it at 118 in the uh, Tech Insider. I want it to uh, get maybe to 125, 128, 130. I thought it could get back up to this gap, uh, and it didn't. So we're out of it before earnings. Uh, as I like to say, sell when you can, not when you have to. Uh, so we'll see what this does. Uh, I think they're probably just going to come out flat, and then maybe we'll get in, depending on the uh, reaction, we'll get back in it. But uh, eh, if you don't have to be in it, and I don't think anybody's saying this goes to 140 tomorrow. Uh, maybe it goes up and down three or four bucks. Uh, is the risk reward really there? Yeah, it would be if I was at 130 today. Uh, so that would be it. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. Of course, we've got other stocks uh, also coming out after the bell, uh, and that will be Alcoa. Um, probably give you a little bit of idea how F FCX uh, may uh, do in the next few days. Uh, I don't see a whole lot out here. It could be an ABC on the way up. I do like the very light volume in the next four days. Let's take a look at FCX. Uh, that's kind of hanging about the same way in which it could be an ABC on the way up. Uh, it could just be consolidating to go retest the lows. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, it seems a lot more to do with China now uh, than what's happening here in the United States. Also, after the bell tonight uh, is Las Vegas Sands, LVS. Uh, and you're kind of at the lows here. Uh, not a lot of juice, just kind of going sideways, uh, bouncing a little off the lows. Um you know, they did have a nice run up to this 4346, mostly on them reopening Macau, and then it came right back down as uh, they eh, weren't uh, totally open. It's like uh, Princess Bride, mostly dead, but not totally dead. We'll be back in a minute.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we uh, come back, get ready to wrap up the day, um, I would say probably going to get a lot of color from two things tomorrow. That is whether or not China continues, at least the Hang Seng, uh, continues to have a, a ripple effect um, and another big day down because I think that's pretty much weighing on the market. I don't think uh, we're getting lambasted too badly. But uh, certainly that, uh, to a lesser extent, maybe some of those gambling stocks uh, may have uh, a little bit of movement. Um, you know, the rest, eh, eh, not bad eh, when you have to actually look about what we had. Uh, you know, if you uh, discount uh, Generac, which is not generally a market moving one. Uh, and Winnebago, which I think everybody could have seen coming 100 miles down the, uh, down the street. Um, I don't know how far you can actually see a Winnebago, but probably pretty far. Uh, anyway, as we look at that, most of the earnings have been either flat or up a bit. Um, there have been a few uh, outliers like Generac and Winnebago, but uh, not so bad so far. So we'll see. Um, I think we're going to get a much better commentary 
I'm not really too interested in what Tesla has to say about their particular business, but what they think of what business is going to be like in China. Um, if there is one company that's going to live and die on China sales it's cert uh, over the last, next year, it's certainly going to be uh, Tesla. And, of course, uh, much, much higher interest rates for people buying Teslas over there uh, now than just six months ago. Um, they've got a lot of problems uh, that they're trying to wiggle out of uh, in the housing sector in uh, China. So I don't know if I'm so interested in Tesla and its movements as what they have to say about what they think the future of business is in China as it will affect us here. Uh, so when you can, not when you have to, and we'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.